Just putting the last few touches on this motor. This is the guide for the throttle cable at the back of the valve cover. Just kind of slips on. And this is for the guide at the front of the valve cover. I think this block heater cord is a little bit close to the exhaust, so I'm going to route it behind the engine mount bracket and underneath the legs for these two bolts and out the side. Much better. Picked up this power steering fluid filter from Summit. I'm just going to cut the return line and clamp it in place. Looks like it might be serviceable. It's got a little snap ring in there. Pop that sucker out, see what's in there. And it is directional, so this needs to face back up to the reservoir. This is what it looks like on the inside. It's got this little magnet with a screen and a spring so that I guess if it got too plugged up it would still let fluid pass. And there's a little relief cut in the machining and this sits down in here. And then this little rubber o-ring kind of seals it and then it gets snap ringed on there. Well I finally got it up in there in place and let me tell you these hose clamps were not having any of it. I mean they just won't go over this last little ridge so I'm just going to get the screw on style. I ended up using one of them up here on the reservoir though. Here's the instructions it came with. It also had a sticker you can stick in your engine compartment. A little exploded diagram. I robbed these map sensor screws off of my other four wheeler and these ones just showed up in the mail. There's the part number. My new 710 just showed up in the mail. I'm going to install a catch can on this motor. It's not necessary, but it's helpful. What it does is it takes your PCV vapor, basically uh, air and oil mixed together, and separates the oil from the air using that media in there. So it comes in one side and vacuums right out the other side, dropping the oil to the bottom. There's also a quick release drain on the bottom of this one. It's a pretty nice can. It comes with this really nice clamp and a couple different length brackets. I'm going to use this existing hole here on the head with the automotive stud and a nut and zap that sucker on. I picked this automotive stud up at Ace Hardware today. It's heat treated, 5 16 18 threads on one side for the head, and 5 16 24 threads on the other side. That's what we're going to put the bracket on and throw a nut on there. Up some copper anises, just thread it in until it stops. You can see there's a little bit of a ledge between the block and the head, so I'm going to use this spacer. This is actually a shim that came with these uh, brown dog mounts. Slip that on there to make up for the difference. Came with two different length brackets. I'm going to use the longer of the two so that I have extra clearance on this stud. Got the bracket on there, another washer, and then this locking 5 16 24 nut. All right, the bracket's on there and it's snug, but it'll still move so that I can get these holes started up under here. And you want to make sure that these threads are on the right side of the clamp so when you put it in, it tightens that way. Both of these are started with some blue Loctite. Just going to tighten them on in. Our blue Loctite, get that sucker started. And I've got all the fittings on there with some thread sealant and I've got this clocked to about where I need it. So just feed it on in. I want to make sure this drain is where I can get to it and the valve is easily accessible. All right, looking good. Everything's easy to get to. Hoses won't have any clearance getting to the barbs. Should work. All right, now let's plumb this thing in. First thing I want to do is point these PCV outlets to where I want them. This is half inch silicone vacuum hose. Should slip right on. Shouldn't even need a uh, hose clamp on there. Should have enough of a grip. Right about there should work. That's about right. Cut a slip about, well, slip the next one on. Angle it over to about here. Another half inch connector T. Slip that in. It's tight fit. And let's make that cut right here. That looks good for the inlet and I should have enough clearance for the throttle cable and everything. I basically did the same thing for the outlet going to the intake. 
short piece of hose, another T fitting. This is a reducer from half inch down to three eighths. I ran a three eighths line over to the uh, inlet tube over here on the intake. And then the inlet tube that goes to the air box, I went and grabbed the air box off a of Jeep, threw it in place so I'd get the right length. I'm gonna bolt it on about like that. I'm gonna put on the flex plate. Before I do that, just gotta put on this little cover. Just line it up for these little pins. You can put a bolt in up here. I'm just going to leave it out. So when you put on the flex plate, these holes are in a certain pattern to match the plate. They're only going to go on one way. So just kind of eyeball it, hope that's wrong, and then rotate it around until they all line up with holes on them. This is what the uh, crank sensor is sensing, so it's kind of clocked got these ARP flex plate bolts that take the uh, ARP fastener lube and get torqued to 105 foot-pounds. So you put this little plate on first and it's the same way you need to circle it around until you get them lined up just right. And you want to snug them all first and then tighten in a crisscross pattern. Here's an easy way to lock that crank from rotating. Just put an open end wrench on the crank pulley bolt and then lean it up against the fan clutch pulley. Well, I think that's about it. I'm going to put her in my Jeep tonight and drop her off at the exhaust shop in the morning. I'd have to say that the greatest challenge I faced building this engine was locating used OEM parts at a decent price. Timbuk3 Automotive in Sheridan, Colorado has by far been the biggest help. Any OEM used part that I needed, they had reasonable price, way better than buying them online like eBay. I mean, the intake manifold, the engine block, I bought them there. Neil and his wife Becky run a very clean shop. They've got a pile of Cherokees, as well as other Jeep parts, but I mean, you name it, they've got it. Incredibly great people, very clean business. Look them up online, shoot them an email, give them a call. Cannot say enough about these two. They just do a great job. You should give them your business if you can. Another awesome shop here in Denver is High Pro Engines. Oliver over there did such a great job on all the machine work. I mean, top-notch service if you're building a race car or just some old beater pickup to go down a dirt road. Great shop, great service, great prices. 505performance.com is a great place for anything Jeep Stroker. Those guys have it all, and they've got some uh, great advice for you too if you just need to pick their brain. Well, that does it. Off to the exhaust shop in the morning. Just need to have them weld a flange on my exhaust system to mate up with that new header. And this thing's good to go. At the exhaust shop. I'll see you this afternoon. Alright, just got it back from the exhaust shop and I'm just picking over it, making sure I didn't forget anything. And I left this ground strap unhooked. Normally it goes from here to this back corner head bolt, but I'm using studs so I don't have enough threads to nut that down on there. So I'm going to use this unused hole on the intake manifold and I'm using the same style of bolt, a little flange bolt that holds the fuel injection rail to the intake. Well it's getting to be that time I just checked the oil level again had to add one more quart of that comp cams break-in oil. Whatever oil you're using make sure you've got that ZDDP on there. And I was checking their website comp cams and they say as soon as it fires up bring it up to 2000 to 2500 RPM for the first 30 minutes and then during that period you can vary it between 2000 and 2500 rpm to splash different areas of the cam but you uh, certainly want that 30 minutes at the high rpm after that change your oil to get all that junk out of there and still use the ZDDP break-in for your first uh, oil service at least and uh, that'll really help uh, uh, with the ring seal and all that while you're breaking it in alright all right, so I'm just gonna Prime the fuel rail a few times. Cycle the key on and off. I'm sure, I got tons of air in that rail. All right, well, let's hit it off. See what happens. Well, that was way too easy. Fired right up. I'm gonna double check the oil level and uh, try it again. All right, got the oil topped up. I'm going to fire it up, and then we're going to use that ratchet strap to hold the throttle down, keep it at 2,000 to 2,500 RPM.
half an hour. It's all broken in. Uh, should be good to go. Just need to do an oil change, take it for a test drive.